What's up, guys? Welcome back to 5W Tech, Episode 3, Chat Chat Tech Talk with Armando Roberto. Today, we're coming back to you every Monday with our laundry list of discussion topics on what's going on in the tech world. We've got lots of topics again. We've got some topics carrying over from previous chat chats. We've got some new ones. We've got some interesting, juicy ones as well. We've got some... Um, market share information as well to talk about, but we'll dive into the juicy content here. Um, we're starting off with a very popular topic, of course, um, or a, a popular game as well, Control, uh, on the PlayStation, though, not on PC. Is that, uh, am I understanding that right? Yeah, this is the ultimate edition on the PlayStation 5, uh, enhanced version of it. And uh, basically, Digital Foundry took a look at it and had a couple of things to say. So let me share my screen. So yeah, so they're saying the Control Ultimate Edition uh, has solid performance on PS5, but like, the settings are mostly low when they look deeply into it. So uh, this comes from courtesy from WCCF Tech, who just reviewed the Digital Foundry video. I haven't watched the video yet. Um, I play Control. I have it on my PC. Uh, full RTX, DLSS. Game is amazing. Fantastic game. Uh, it deserves a lot of the appraise that it got. I, I'm not sure about the sales. I think they're there. But I know a couple of our friends have this game too. And uh, it's an enjoyable game. Good story, good graphics. And uh, they gave free content uh, depending on what package you bought. Okay. Now, though, I know there's con uh, controversy regarding this because... Um, the Ultimate Edition wasn't being offered as a free upgrade to the original edition. I don't know what the outcome was there because I've been following it. A lot of people were complaining about that problem. But I have the Ultimate Edition on my PC. Okay. I waited. I didn't buy it right away, so I waited about a couple of months and I got the Ultimate Edition. And what did you get with the Ultimate Edition? The two two free expansions. Okay. And uh, basically in the main game. Okay. Very enjoyable. This game is very good. This this game has been marketed kind of like a, a benchmark game more than an actual content game. Would you disagree with that? No, no, I disagree. The game, well, it's good for benchmarking, but there is, a, it's a good story. It's a good game. There's good gameplay. Okay. Eventually, we'll co we'll cover it in one of our uh, discount reviews. Yeah. Has it ever gone on discount? I haven't seen it. On discount. <laughs> no. so, so we'll have to wait. <laughs> we'll have to wait. Yeah, but the game is pretty good. So. Digital Foundry said the PlayStation version, the PlayStation, PlayStation 5 version of the Ultimate Edition basically gets a solid 60 FPS with a bit of slowdown here and there. Uh, when you put ray tracing on, it's capped at 30 with frame pace, uh, frame pacing sticking to its target for the mass majority of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, they said the Xbox series is similar, but there's some stutter in the last okay. gen version. Uh, they say it also in PC, but I haven't seen any stutter at all on my PC at all. No issues regarding the performance of my, uh, with DLSS. Right. So uh, when they did a comparison, uh, basically on what the settings would look like uh, versus a PC, uh, so basically they compared the PlayStation 5 settings on what it would look like on a PC, and this is what they came up with. So the display resolution is you know 4K. Mm -hmm. It's rendering at a 1440p internally, so it uses checkboard rendering on the PlayStation 5. Uh, custom settings from the object detail, text resolution medium, and a bunch of low settings here and there. Ray tracing is also off in most of the cases for uh, non-ray tracing. Yeah. So to hit the 60 frames per second, they shut off the ray tracing, and then mm -hmm. when it's on, it's 30 frames per second. Wow. So the mighty PS5 is having mighty <laughs> trouble with this game. <laughs> <laughs> I literally get like 100 frames per second with the 3080, everything maxed. Yeah. Ray tracing on. Mm -hmm. DLS is quality. With not quality, I put it on. Uh, it's on balanced on my okay. ultra wide and performance on uh, 4K. 4K. Yeah. Wow, render res resolution is uh, 2K. Oh, on, the, uh, on the PlayStation 5, yes, yeah. yeah, so with yeah. checkerboard rendering, but the PS5's upscaling is very good. Okay. Truly, truly sad state of affairs to be honest with you. Mm. What it. With the uh, with the power the PlayStation Five has, it barely runs this game at. Yeah. Uh, it's not even medium. I wouldn't say this is medium setting at, say, at settings at all. No, this is not. This medium. <laughs> there, there are more lows than there are mediums. I know. Don't I'm not need, sure you don't, why. You don't need a scientist to tell you that one. 
I know, okay, so there's two things I think is going on here. It's A, this game is optimized more on the NVIDIA side. Mm -hmm. B, our DNA 2 is part of the PlayStation 5 architecture. Right. So it's AM, It's an AMD game. AMD does not perform well in this game mm -hmm. compared to NVIDIA. So maybe that's the case. It's not really optimized for the NVIDIA, um, sorry, AMD architecture. Okay. That's interesting. That's a slap to the face to console owners, though. Maybe. Could so there could be some shenanigans going on there for <laughs> NVIDIA, but it's it, it runs pretty well on my on my rig, my thirty eighty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not everybody has your rig, so. But even on if you had a thirty seventy or twenty eighty Ti, you'd be running this pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, even last, you know, Turing cards run this pretty decently. All, all of those cards you just listed are not available, so. <laughs> you can get Turing. <laughs> Or maybe not. No, can't get really, can't yeah. get really anything. No, to be you can't get anything. I think you have a better chance of getting a PS5 now. Uh, I guess that's one of your other topics later on down the road about availability. Uh, I don't think you could get the PS5 either. <laughs> I got, I got lucky again. Oh. I got two. So I got three of them. What, so I got three ah. PS5s. Oh my god! But I was using, I was using alerts off of Twitter, so I got three PS5s. Okay. So, and a 3080. <laughs> <laughs> Hardware acquisition. I, I think we should oh, change yeah. the the channel name to <laughs> Hardware Acquisition. And I could have got a three ninety. It's like you could have, you could have, but but they raised the price, which yeah is. So, can, we talk about that in Chat Chat episode two. Yeah. If you guys want to check out what happened with that, but um, all right. So, so control on PS five low yeah. settings. I'll be honest. If you don't have a PC and you do have a console, get the game. Get the game. It's fun. I enjoyed it. But if you do have a good PC, get on a PC. Yeah. Simple as that. All right. Nice. All Next right. Next topic. Next topic is we're Ald going to Ald Intel. Ooh. Alder Lake P makes it about with 14 cores. So apparently, on this is from videocards.com, the 12th gen Alder Lake has appeared on Geekbench. Mm -hmm. This seems like it's the mobility processor. Yeah. So let's read about it. So Intel Alder Lake the, uh, CPU with 14 cores and 20 threads. It's hybrid. It's a hybrid architecture, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, it's going to be. Uh, is this the six-core one? I guess. Uh, it's going to be six-six. Uh, what is this going to be? Uh, Fourteen cores, twenty threads. So, anyways, it's the hybrid architecture utilizes big and small cores. Uh, it's going to be the first high-end mobile series equipped with such technology. Mm -hmm. So Geekbench has some results from this. The CPU was able to reach 4.7 gigahertz. Uh, it doesn't say which type of core it reaches frequency. Right. Though it says the maximum frequency on average for the CPU is 4.27. Mm -hmm. So in order to have 14 cores and 20, here it is. Here's the configuration I wanted to get out. So basically, in order to have 14 cores and 20 thread configuration, the CPU has six big cores with hyperthreading and eight small cores with no hyperthreading. Interesting. So 14 cores in total, but because the six have the hyper-threading, it's, it's 20 threads. Mm -hmm. uh, so here's the list here. Such a configuration is indeed listed in the table below of uh, what Alder Lake should come in, which configuration will be available. Mm -hmm. So the big Alder Lake CPU, the 12900K, mm -hmm. is going to be eight big cores, eight small cores. Right. So uh, 16 with about 24 threads, basically. So it's going to have eight cores, 24 threads. Okay. If they go with that marketing scheme, basically, right. the little cores or lot will be counted as threads instead of cores. Mm -hmm. So, um, else, I would really like to see how this performs. It's very interesting, absolutely okay. interesting how this is going to perform. This is the first time this architecture has been. It's going to be running with x86 programs, I believe. So right. I don't know how. I don't know how it's going to perform without any optimization. So this is going to be very interesting. Right. And I guess they are also upgraded the uh, iGPU graphics on these cards as well. I see some... Um, yeah, they had Z, Z onboard graphics as mm -hmm. well. Uh, they're saying it's, the onboard graphics this iGPU had is comparable to a 660 Ti on a desktop. Right. Which is very old by now, but yeah. still... This is an engineering sample. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, you don't know. Z, Z4 integrated is supposed to be okay. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing we'll eventually hit 1050 Ti type of performance yeah. of one of these integrated graphics. 
maybe not this gen, a couple of gens from now, we'll probably see that, which isn't too bad. Basically, you could play esports games. Esports, Overwatch, Rocket League. Yeah, yeah, Rocket League, exactly. These yeah. games like CSGO. So, it's not too bad. But I'm very, very excited to see how much the performance comes from these chips. Mm -hmm. Very excited. Well, the desktop versions. Even the, even the mobile. Even the mobile? Okay. Yeah, I'm very excited to see how this, gonna, how this plays out. Because if Zen 3... Plus comes out at the end of the year, so the Warhol family of uh, AMD chips. Yeah. With basically, it's a it's a refresh of the Zen 3 that came out recently. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have single digit IPC increase and clock speed increase. It's that's gonna be if it's the same. I hope it's not AM4, but apparently it's gonna be AM4 platform. Okay. So what I'm hearing is that AM4 platform will be for the Zen 3 overall coming this Q4. Uh, meaning that there's going to be DDR4 and PCI Express 4 tapped out on the AM4 platform. Right. And Intel will have PCI Express 5 and DDR5 oh. with Alder Lake platform. Okay. So LGA 1700. So it's, I want to see how it plays out. I Hopefully Intel is competitive again. Yeah. If not, what would you do? Would you buy Ryzen if it's time to upgrade? Or would you keep your 9900K? I think I would keep the 9900K. You would I, not switch to Ryzen? Not for the main rig. Not for my main rig. I think where I would carefully dive into the AMD platform would be with my basement rig, with my secondary gaming system. But for my main rig, which I do the video editing on, which I do gaming on, um, all our recordings, everything, I, I, I'm so far very thrilled with my 9900K. I mean, the only reason when we talked about this in Chat Chat episode one and two, that w only reason we'll be upgrading is because of DDR5. There's no other actual reason. Uh, and I mean, Intel looks very interesting right now, but um, I, I wouldn't make that change over to uh, to Ryzen just for the cores. You're you're playing you're two generations behind right now on your CPU, and you're still clocked at 5.1 gigahertz, aren't you? Yes. So 5.1 gigahertz with minimal effort, relatively minimum cooling. You don't have any special uh, custom looping or anything like that. You just got an AIO cooler on there, and that's it. And you're able to achieve 5.1 gigahertz. Yeah. So. No. But again, you're losing, uh, you're losing out on Gen 4. How Maybe much? not for G GPUs, but the hard drive speeds, basically. For oh, M2. Hard, hard drive speeds mm -hmm. are already insane right now. With so, uh, uh, But again, if they implement NVIDIA I.O. to match the speed of the consoles, mm -hmm. a lot of games, not now, but games will take advantage of the hard drive speed, especially open world gates, load, games loading in textures yeah. and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's when the fear of missing out is that. Yeah. It may not be right away. It may not be next year, but it will come. And you will need Gen 4 PCI Express speeds. Yeah, I don't think you'll need Gen 4 speeds. So be careful with the wording, need. You won't need it. You don't need a 3080 Ti. Or you don't need a 3080. You don't need a 3090. You of course don't you need do. A 90. <laughs> no, 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 Who no. Says you don't need that, that's, again, that's, hard, that's acqui <laughs> hardware okay, acquisition. Fine. You want, the want you will want. be there. The need will probably not be there, but the want will be there. Right, right. All right, so... I hear what you're saying. I just uh, I know you you're an anti Ryzen fanboy. I'm not an anti. You're painting <laughs> a very bad picture here. I I could have gone for it on my basement rig. I could have had something with more more cores, um, more speed, and taken advantage of higher memory clocks. I think I would have had overall better performance than my choice with the 10400. But um, going back with the history of AMD, I, I've just had bad experiences, and so have you. I mean, put your money where your mouth is. Let's see you buy an AMD uh, platform next time. I may. I may buy it. <laughs> well, I, I will I follow what you do. How about that? All right. There All we right. go. So we'll hold you to it. <laughs> All right. Let's go All on right. to the next topic. Next topic is Google, Google. Stadia. <laughs> Stadia. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. What's going it's on here? Another one of Google's products that go straight to the Google graveyard. <laughs> oh my god, they never follow through with anything. I'm surprised like if they did not have a market hold on ads on the internet. Like, yeah. Seriously, I don't know. This company would have burned down a long time ago. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, it's bad. Like uh, what's keeping like Android and their ads basically uh, right. search engine. Right. That, that's it. 
everything else they try i mean i mean they're they're innovative in a way mm-hmm. that uh they bring up good innovation but they don't follow through so as soon as something doesn't pick up right away i find is dump the product mm-hmm. which when you have billions and billions of dollars you can do right so stadia do you know what stadia is i believe you do it's their cloud cloud gaming platform right basically you buy a controller from them and they sent you a uh, the first iteration they sent you a google chromecast you mm-hmm. plug it in and you game over the cloud right now there's there's cloud gaming services out there and uh geforce now uh, xcloud and they both are good complements to your current systems for example geforce now i enjoy performs really well and it's basically your games played on a cloud right so it's a complement to your hardware mm-hmm xCloud is the same thing. You get it, you sign up, you can play it on an Xbox, you can play it on the cloud, the, your game on the cloud, you can play it on the Xbox, you can play it on the PC with the Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Perfect complementary service that you get. Google, with their genius idea, basically is you have to buy the game and you can only play it on their service. Mm-hmm. So you can't play it anywhere else. So if it goes down, bye bye game. <laughs> You cannot play this game, their games anywhere. Right. So their whole business model is awful from the beginning. Secondly, right. their technology, which in theory on paper sounds great, low latency, uh, Wi-Fi enabled controller, uh, mm-hmm. perfect, perfect latency, 4K HDR, perfect clarity, um, basically failed out of the box. I yeah. find that GeForce Now at 1080p looks better than Stadia at yeah. 4K HDR. I remember they were comparing some Stadia-specific games, I think Red Dead, mm-hmm. uh, compared to a PC, and it was like, the quality was awful. Wow. Like the actual graphical quality, not just the image on the renderer, that yeah. should, but the actual graphic settings were much lower than what you see on PC. Right. And even Destiny 2 as well was much lower than you see on console. So but it's quite sad. This so was supposed to revolutionize gaming, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a Google the, PR, Google PR stunt. This was usually. supposed to end all other gaming, PC hardware, PC gaming, console gaming. This was it, right? This was like, uh, well, this, if this oh, goes, it was through, all, It was a scam. Everybody knew it was a scam from the beginning. <laughs> so they hired, the, the only good thing about it was the first party games that they were gonna have. Mm-hmm. So basically, Jade Raymond, a Montreal native, uh, Google opened up a, a studio in Montreal. They they brought her in. Basically, she created the Assassin's Creed uh, games and some Star Wars games. Mm-hmm. Pretty good games. The original Assassin's Creed were really good. Uh, and she was brought in to start leading a, uh, a team in Montreal. And there was another team in Los Angeles as well that opened up. And for the team in Los Angeles, they brought the God of War uh, lead uh, project develop not project, but project supervisor in. Right. And God of War. I mean, you have two of these heavyweights running your the visions of first party games and he decided to close it down. <laughs> it's, I thought it's been a year. It's been a year they closed them down. Wow. That's it. No more third party no more first party games for Google Stadia. Only third party. Mm-hmm. This is dead in the water. If you have Stadia, mm-hmm. throw in the garbage. <laughs> Try to get your money back. And if you're thinking of buying this, do not buy oh this thing. Oh my god, yeah. If you really need to cloud game, get the Xbox game uh, cloud gaming or you get GeForce now. Mm-hmm. Do not buy this trash. Oh, there you go. It's have trash. It. I can't believe it. I remember Gamers Gamers Nexus ripped apart the controller. It yeah. just built built poorly. It's like it was such such a bad idea from the beginning. I marketed it as revolutionizing gaming. That, that's all I remember. That was the. Uh, I had friends approach me, friends that wanted to PC game, wanted to put a PC together, and they were like, "Why would I?" do that when I can just get this I said go for it man get it see what to see what happens and look what happens <laughs> Terrible. no uh, uh, you have to understand these cloud gaming solutions you need a good internet speed basically yeah. to have a good uh, have a good uh, experience mm-hmm. and uh, if you don't have a good internet uh, good luck yeah so for me I have a great experience cloud gaming I have fast internet I have great experience game streaming because I have have quick local network. Uh, I'm okay, but I would never, ever get rid of my local hardware for cloud gaming, ever. Right. right. Ever. Right, because you put yourself at the mercy of that company. 
You can't well, modify anything. Not... You can't change anything. You can't increase. You can't. Um, you you game at the same specs as anyone else does, as long as you have the same connection. Yeah, but I mean, if they give you top-notch hardware, like uh, GeForce Now gives you RTX cards now. Mm -hmm. Get an RTX card for like ten bucks a month. Yeah. So I mean, it's basically how how GeForce Now works. It's like you're renting a, a machine yeah. to play your games on. But you own this game, so you can play it on your local machine. Yeah. This is why it's smarter. Where Google Stadia has, you bought the game from them, and then if yeah. they go belly up, you're gone with that yeah. game. So you buy Assassin's Creed Valhalla on Google Stadia, and Google Stadia closes tomorrow, yeah. you lose your money. <laughs> so, terrible. That, that I'm getting terrible. angry talking about this. Let's, <laughs> skip. let's just skip. I just can't get over it. Right. And only that, 150 people apparently will lose their job. Yeah. I hope they get transferred to some other department, but yeah. that the worst thing about it is they're saying that 150 people will lose their job. Yeah, that's the worst. Not a good All thing right. to hear around this time of year. And I, I, know. I mean, uh, I don't know how the next topic is going to be any better, but uh... well, it's Sony. Sony sold 4.5 million PlayStation consoles last mm -hmm. year, similar to what the PS4 had in the first uh, in the release window. Right. So. Uh, basically, uh, The Verge comes came up with this article is basically saying their sales figures are great, compared to, comparable to their PS4 window launch. Mm -hmm. um, demand on the PlayStation 4 dropped dramatically year on year. 1.4 units shipped in October to December. That's a 77% de decrease from the previous year. Right. Again, PS5 was launched. Nobody's going to buy a PS4 uh, at that point. Um, but yeah, so they're just the Verge article is talking about the, the sales, but there's more details to this that basically videocars.com put together and are talking about it in more detail where, yes, 4.5 million PlayStation 5s were sold, but they're being sold at a loss. For the company. <laughs> at a loss. <laughs> Not for the scalpers. <laughs> yeah, that's quite sad. So yeah. the company confirmed the PlayStation 5 is sold at a loss, which is resulting from a strategic price point for PS5 hardware that were set lower than manufacturing costs. Mm-hmm. It's also on target to meet its goal of 7.6 million PS5 sales by end of March 2021. I agree. I think the PS5 will outsell lifetime the PS4. Yeah. And the PS4 has sold over 100 million units. I think it was the second or thir third, maybe second best-selling PlayStation console behind the PlayStation 2. Right. I think this will beat the PS4 in sales. <clears throat> the demand is there, uh, especially this year. Oh. Right. Right. Look, the pandemic is here. They we're going to have, we had last year, this year, and it's going to go into next year where life is not going to go back to normal, in my right. opinion. Right. Gaming is at full swing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a huge boom in gaming uh, sales. Yeah. People, we all know, we can't find anything except me, I can find stuff, but <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can literally find, you can't literally find anything yeah. uh, in terms of hardware. Yeah. So, if you look at it, the PlayStation 5, the technology in these consoles is pretty good. You cannot build a PC within the price range to get this performance compared to a console. No, not for the price range. No, not now. Like not this year. You will not. You cannot build a PC for five hundred dollars US, mm -hmm. where it gets you ten teraflops of graphical power. Yeah. On uh, sixteen gigabytes of uh, uh, memory, and an NVMe one terabyte. Of storage, like yeah. less than one terabyte, but whatever, it's like eight hundred something. Mm -hmm. But uh, and uh, an RDNA uh, and a, a Zen two CPU, eight cores, sixteen threads. Like yeah. you won't, you won't be able to. And the Xbox Series X is a even bit, little, a bit more powerful, twelve yeah. teraflops. Yeah. Uh, more GPU, uh, uh, GPU rendering cores and uh, faster CPU. Yeah. So. Higher bandwidth and a little bit more space. Yep. Interesting. Well, yeah, that that's. Can you build? Can you build a, CP, a PC? No, no, no. not at all. No, not at all. No. You might find 80, 75 percent of the parts will be obtainable. Like what? How? What, motherboard. What? You could get a motherboard. You could get it. You could get storage. You could get a case. You could get a power supply. But you could get a you could get a ter you could get a PCI Gen four terabytes. They're, they're like $300. Uh, okay, an overclockable board. No, but wait, you cannot find... Okay. 
a, a PCI Gen 4 one terabyte hard drive. No, no, drive. not you won't. No, you won't get that. It's same 300 type, bucks no. Canadian, so like <laughs> you're already killed your your. Uh, your the MSRP budget's rate. gone. You're right. You're you're going to be making sacrifices on the hardware to yep. try and get it down. <laughs> a gamers Nexus said some games at 1060. Uh, a GTX 1060 can meet performance of a PS5, mm-hmm. but that's like I think it was just testing a few games, which were the backwards compatible ones from PS4. G- okay. Yeah. So I mean that makes sense, but the PS5 games that are built for PS5 will not mm-hmm. a 1060 will not be able to do it. Right. So like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which was built for PS5, but there's a version for it. It it basically you need a 2080 to match. Yeah, the you can't play. Uh, there's, there's no 4K gameplay on a 1060. No. We need a 2080 to match its performance, and I forgot which game they tested for ray tracing, and you need a 2060 to match its ray tracing performance. I forgot which game it was. Maybe I, I don't remember, but it needed 2060 in ray tracing performance. Right. So you cannot, you cannot find hardware for a PC. You can't build a PC to match a console this year. Mm-hmm. Maybe next year, things will change. Yeah. You'll be able to find cheaper GPUs, and then yeah, you know what. You can find a 3060 Ti for 200 bucks. Go ahead. <laughs> I have doubt, though. I don't know how you could say that with a serious face, but <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing here. But, but <laughs> oh man, I'm just saying the consoles are a good buy. They're, they're a good complementary to a PC. I mean, mm-hmm. if you can, like, I mean, if you have the money, PC, in my, in my opinion, is primary gaming right. uh, ecosystem. Yeah. But if you could go, if if you don't have the cash and you need a good system, I I would get a PS5, which I do have one. But I'm just saying, if you really want a game and your budget's limited, PS5 all the way. Right. <clears throat> all right. Very good. Moving on to the next topic. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> Three letters. I, I, so GTX RTX. Sorry, the GeForce RTX. This comes from NotebookCheck.net. Uh, RTX 3060 Ti, 3080, and 3090 all appear on the Steam hardware survey. Oh. Excuse me? How? How? Yeah. How did these appear on the Steam hardware survey? I, it makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense. Wait, this, this, is, has, this is the elite 1% here, right? <laughs> look at this. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at this. Explain to me how these three car- graphics cards made it to the Steam hardware survey. Oh, yeah. <sighs> I don't know what percentages those are. Is that margin of error? That could be margin of error, couldn't no, it? No, it's not margin of error. This is a percentage of their Steam when they do this, the hardware yeah. check. Yeah, yeah. It's the percentage of, 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 of Steam users that have these cards. Yeah. Look at this. Well, to be fair, what are what's let's let's use an estimate. How many Steam users are there? How many people are logged on to Steam? Well, so many. There are so many. Let's look at overall. Let's just change per month. Let's look at the overall share. Overall share mm-hmm. for January. Wow. Well, I don't see any 3000 series cars there. <laughs> because they're not there. <laughs> yeah. They're not there. It's the change. For, it's the month. It's yeah, the month, month change. Month. Yeah. Yeah. And people started getting them in, or there might have been. I don't know what they're not taking surveys for a while. I'm not sure. But uh, that's... Uh, wow. Uh, you can see uh, more people... Yeah, the, the 3080 is at the bottom of the list. I don't see the 3070 there either. So, no sight of the 3070. So here, here's what they say. So the 3060 Ti is the highest percentage share change of the other new Empire cards. Mm-hmm. A point twenty seven percent from January and lying in fourth place in the chart behind the ten series. Yeah. While the thirty ninety snags a twenty three percent increase and the thirty eighty cements the position by claiming another eighteen. Right. Those thirty seventy on the steam table. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not enough stock, who knows uh, at this point. But the, the percentage share it's growing. Yeah. Yeah. But the overall share it's not even on it's not uh, even there. Not even there. Yeah. But even the percentage I still understand <laughs> there's no cards. Yeah. Everybody's complaining. Barely anybody has these cards. Yet, oh. anyways. <sighs> it's you and me. That's pretty much it. It's, it's just me and you. <laughs> and five one other guys, guy with the 3090. One other guy with the 3090. Five guys in New York. Linus, te- Linus Tech Tips. Right. <laughs> it, you know what, though? No. It's Actually, not telling you. It's percent- margin of error. 
Hold on. The percentage change is based on all the tech reviewers getting their cards and logging <laughs> Steam to do the benchmarks. That's exactly what this is. <laughs> That's exactly what this thing is. Oh, my God. Yeah, so what's the highest? The 1060 is still the greatest card of all it time, is. according to yeah. Steam. It's making a, it's a big drop right now. Um, no. The 1050 Ti, it's funny that you point that out because it's the only graphics card available for purchase on Amazon. At, the 1050 uh, Ti. It's the only card you can go into Amazon right now and pretty much add to card and check out with. That's what's there. And I, even that, I've seen um, a price price increase on that. What, $300 for 1050 Ti? I, I think I saw close to 400 for 1050 Ti. <laughs> but they're there. They're buy it now. They're available. They're, it, may, they're... it makes no sense, man. It doesn't make any sense. That's that's crazy. That I, explains the increase. Uh, it's the second card in line. 1650, the card you should have gotten. <laughs> <laughs> and... well, yeah, so Turing's made its appearance here. Turing here. Uh, and no, yeah. no sign of three. Uh, 2080 TIs. What happened to the 2080 TIs? Uh, not here. Nope. Wow. Nvidia graphics device. Uh, what? It, what on earth is that? That that's cloud. That's GeForce Now, maybe. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I have no um, idea. And of course, the 580. All the uh, uh, secondhand mining cards. Mining that, cards that got shot back into society for usage. <laughs> They're still ticking. They're still being used. <laughs> <laughs> what a disaster! Oh man! All right. All right, good Next to know. That, that's actually good. That's good information. I haven't checked the. Oh, wait, hold on. Here, here, like, buy Gigabyte 1050 Ti from Amazon. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna click it. I don't, I don't. want to see. I didn't want to see. <laughs> You're gonna check out with one. I know. <laughs> Next All topic. Right. What have we've got? Asus. Uh... No, not Asus. No. AMD shipped nearly one million Ryzen 5000 Zen 3s in Q4, but Intel still gained overall desktop and notebook market share. It's impressive that Intel actually gained any market share, but. Um, this comes from WCCF Tech, and here it is, basically, Q4 market share, Intel, 80%, AMD, 20%, and VIA, 0.1%. Mm -hmm. Change per year, Intel increased by 0.8, while AMD decreased. Mm -hmm. It's quite sad. Quite sad people actually bought in, in Intel desktops more than AMD Yeah, I, I overall. Did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I bought I bought the platform I was told not to buy pretty much on every review. <laughs> Either way, maybe it's AMD not having enough supply. In my opinion, I that think too. that's what it is. That too. Uh, these, these these CPUs are sold out, and you can't find them yeah, anywhere. Five thousand series came out, and they were not available. Yeah, that, that's in my opinion what happened because you could get the ten four hundred from Intel. Oh yeah. Like yeah. Uh, any of the Comet Lake CPUs were mi widely available. Yeah. So I mean, if you can't find a Ryzen. The Ryzen 5 5600, a lot of people went to 10400, right? right. So. And people wanted to put systems together. I mean, I've, yeah. I've walked into a brick and mortar store many times this year, and I saw more people in there than I did prior to that. Um, you'd, you'd walk into a store like Canada Computers and you'd, you'd, on a Saturday and there were maybe two people in there. One person was buying a USB cable and another guy was talking to someone about a router. And now you had people there putting gaming rigs together in a pandemic. Yeah. So let's see what they say from D. McCarran from uh, Mercury Research, what he said about the uh, AMD selling sales for Q4. The Ryzen 5000 supply ramp was record-breaking for AMD by a wide margin. Mm -hmm. uh, they grew strongly in client CPUs, just less so than Intel, where AMD's share loss came from. In desktop, it's particularly noteworthy that Ryzen 5000 series had an explosive ramp in their first quarter shipments, outshipping AMD best prior desktop CPU by two times the amount. Wow. So they think they're saying they ship close to a million, which we kind of know that they ship close to a million. In my opinion, I believe there was more demand, and if AMD could have met that demand, they would have had data maintained or gained even more market share. Oh, than absolutely, had. So. absolutely, because the reviewers also yep. put it out there that it's an amazing yep. product. Yep, agreed, hundred percent. That sucks. That sucks. You have a product, but you just can't. I mean, they're not can't put it in the hands sold. of the users. They sold a million CPUs. They made their money. And more people want it. I believe this year, mark my words, AMD will eat at least gain and maybe get 20, 25% market share from Intel. Those are big That's words. That's what I believe that will happen. Those are 20 big to, words. Yeah, 20 to 25%. 
Are you going to be one of those people? I will be one of those people. <laughs> no, Mike, because Rocket League is a disaster. Yeah. But anyways, we won't talk about Rocket League in detail. But I believe Rocket League is just a stopgap mm-hmm. to basically say, look, we still exist. Please buy our CPU that is less cores than our previous generation. <laughs> it runs hotter. Yeah. So, like, yeah. And it's, it's only basically you get the motherboard to last one CPU cycle, mm-hmm. and that's it. So, no, no thanks. No thanks. Oh, good job, AMD here. Let's go to the next one. Diablo right. Immortal Preview. And I like the title of WCCF Tech put here. Do you guys not have phones? That was a comment <laughs> made by Blizzard uh, employees at BlizzCon like, a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, geez. This game right here, I haven't read this article yet. I just wanted to talk about it Yeah. off topic, offhand here. I cannot believe they're actually making this freaking game. Yeah. I cannot believe it. I know the reason why is microtransactions and mobile money in your pocket. Right. Mobile games siphon so much money out of people. Yeah. I know why they're doing it, but it's to me it's a slap in the face. Mm-hmm. Absolute slap in the face. What do you think? Will you buy this game? Will you uh, play this on your on your uh, Galaxy uh, Note? Absolutely not. Why not? Because I'm a diehard Diablo fan, and a hack and slash game like this belongs on the PC, not on my phone. Um, I remember Blizzard having problems with microtransactions in games. I remember the auction house in Diablo. Do you remember the auction house? Yes. Yeah. Where you could buy stuff with real money? Yeah. <laughs> what happened to that auction house? <laughs> it disappeared. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Look, he played it on a Galaxy S10 Plus. The game ran great no matter what action on the screen. Plus, it looked good while doing it visually. It's just Diablo 3 on a phone. Yeah. I, I don't know. I haven't read the article. So they did preview it. Guys, check it out. See what they say. If you're interested in this game, go ahead and read the article and see what they say about it. I'm not a mobile gamer. Neither Can't stand I. playing games on my phone. Cannot stand doing it. So um, if you are a mobile gamer and you're a fan of Diablo, go check this article out and see what they say. I, we just brought it up. I just want, We just wanted to touch point up based on it. that It was out there. There are previews. I think the game is coming out this year sometime. Um, but yeah. What's Check it the out. Hold up. <laughs> it's just Diablo three. <laughs> I have no idea. Hey, they can, uh, pandemic. Who knows? I I remember the re- reaction of the crowd at BlizzCon when it, they introduced this the game. A, is this it, an it, out of season <laughs> April Fool's joke? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh god. All right, let's move on. All right, next topic. So this topic has been one of the longest learning topics since we started. Chat chats. Uh, chat chats, tech chat chats. So we complained, uh, other people have complained considerably a large amount of, vo- of feedback from people mm-hmm. on these laptops were complaints that NVIDIA or these manufacturers were not actually putting the TGP of the GPU of the card. So depending on the, the TGP limitations of the laptop you got, mm-hmm. you had no freaking idea what type of performance you got out of the laptop. You could have bought a 3080 laptop that had lower performance than the 3070. You had no clue. But now they dem- are dem- now Nvidia is demanding their OEMs to actually put the TGP specification on the box, right, which is which is amazing. This is amazing. This is now I'm telling you this is now I'm okay with this. Yeah. I'm okay with the GPUs. I'm okay with their uh, laptop GPUs now. This was the this was needed. So Asus, Asus is the first, uh, basically, OEM to actually list all its spec. Right. So let's go into the next article from videocards.com. It basically talks about it here. So their GA503QM, uh, it's a 3060 and it has 80 watts. The same model with a, I guess, a different version of it has the exact same thing. And then the 3070 has 80 watts on their GA503 QR. So it's a QR, basically with 80 watts on the 3070. So they're listing the wattage now, okay. which is good. Which is which is now you notice this 3070 is going to be faster than this 3060. Right. Where this 3070 <laughs> could have 25 watts yeah. and it would, be, <laughs> it would be like, oh my God. So here are all the laptops and they all have the TGPs listed, which is fantastic. 
that's that's a great article. We'll, we'll have that link in the description definitely to check out if you're in the market for the laptop. Um, this way you'll know exactly which product to look at and you're not playing the guessing game. Because look, look right here. This 3080, right here, look, MSI. This is MSI. Yeah. Uh, I think it was a stream. Somebody took a snapshot of the stream. Yeah. Here's their, their laptops. Here's a 3080. There's a 3080 80 watt. <laughs> okay. It would probably be slower than a 3070 115 watt. Yeah. And while this 3070 80 watt would probably be slower than this 3060 115 watt. Yeah. So this is good. This is good news. So that if you're in a, if you're in the market for a laptop or, or an Ampere card, and uh, you can't find one. A laptop would be a good source to get it until we get to our last article of the day, but we'll talk about it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into some more games. One of my favorite franchises is Battlefield. So uh, let's talk about Battlefield. So Andrew Wilson, CEO of EA, has promised a game will launch sometime this year, and it'll be All Out Warfare. Uh, basically, this is probably going to be a modern, modern uh, warfare type of uh, Battlefield. So mm -hmm. probably... Return to how Battlefield 3 and 4 were, where it take place in the modern day. Okay. Now, you didn't play Battlefield 5, but you did play Battlefield 1. Battlefield 1 was pretty good. First game ever to use World War 1 uh, as a background for their game. Yeah. Um, well, maybe not the first game ever, but the first uh, FPS shooter. I believe it's the first one. Uh, it was great. It was a great game. I remember we all played it. Uh, but Battlefield 5, not many of us bought it. I got it on, on discount. Mm-hmm. The game Battlefield Five was a disaster from the beginning, <laughs> with the marketing, with the low content, with the performance issues, and they've basically been trying to catch up ever since. And they just decided this year that was it; it's over. Yeah. So no, last last year, sorry. So last Q4 last year, that was it for Battlefield Five as a, as a, uh, running as a service. Okay. So I got it on discount. Kill uh, it like Stadia. Yeah. <laughs> Battlefield 5 had lowest, I think, low sales. Yeah. Uh, bad reviews based on who reviewed it. Some of these paid reviewers actually reviewed it well, but the actual gamers and non uh, non mainstream reviewers mm -hmm. trashed the game, uh, rightly so, because the game had major problems. Yeah. Uh, they attacked fans. Uh, they marketed it in one rid ridiculous marketing behind the game. Uh, performance issues. No freaking content. Yeah. Uh, great graphics. All Battlefield games have great graphics. Yeah. DLSS implementation and ray tracing. The first one of the first games to have it, which DLSS DLSS implementation was awful, uh, unless you're running it at 4K, and the ray tracing was meh. It was depending on the type of, type of map you're at. It looks good, but it's hardly noticeable. Yeah. Um. But hopefully they fix it. I know they they skipped last year. So hopefully they fix it. They fix the franchise. They they write the ship. And what I like what I I I like hearing is that it may go beyond sixty four player maps. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. That sounds good. On console, PC, everything. I don't know about console, but for sure PC. <laughs> okay. Wow. This is looking good. Hopefully they uh, EA writes the ship here. I mean. Battlefield Five was a total disaster, and our discount. Re we'll do a discount review on it, and because yeah, uh, you own it, so yeah, perfect. I own it. I but I don't like like I like it sometimes. I don't. Know, uh, uh, it's fun once in a while, but it's very disappointing compared to Battlefield One. Very disappointing. So um, we'll review it, and then uh, we'll, you'll see our thoughts in, in detail when we get to that review. Uh, to continue on to the Battlefield Six topic. This comes from DSO Gaming. It will have destructible buildings again. Oh, nice. But nice. the old Battlefield games, I think Battlefield Hardline, not Hardline, sorry, Battlefield um, Bad Company had destructible buildings. I played that game with one of our friends uh, a lot, Battlefield uh, Bad Company 2 yeah. on the PS3. And uh, you could blow up buildings. The environment was very destructible. It was very fun. Uh, Battlefield 3 and 4, I don't remember having that much destructible environments. Like, you could, sh with a tank, you could shoot a wall, the wall will just collapse, but it wasn't really uh, cool like Battlefield or uh, Bad Company. Right. So they're saying they're going fully destructible buildings, which is going to be amazing. Nice. Fully amazing. So this is a good thing to see. 
uh, they're saying holiday 2021 is coming out this year so hopefully this game is uh, uh, a return to form for Battlefield right on to more video game news Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2 will not release in 2021 Ooh. this is this, this hurts this thing's a, uh-huh. Uh-huh. this thing's a bit again from DSL Gaming great, great website basically so what do you think uh, diehard Diablo fan here. I've I've been to BlizzCon 2000 and, uh, 2008, 2006. Uh, I went there. Um, little proof here. Uh, have my Can't little clean Xbox. Yeah, I'll 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 drop uh, I'll drop an okay. image somewhere. 2008 BlizzCon. I was there. I got to play Diablo 4. Uh, sorry, Diablo 3 before it came out. They only had two characters available. Um, I can't remember the release date. It took, still took another two years after that to come out. Um, I I I loved the Diablo series. Um, amazing. I can't wait for it to come out, but I don't want it to be rushed. I do not want Diablo to be a rushed game. Overwatch is also a fun game. We've played Overwatch a lot. Uh, we played Overwatch with our all of our friends with inferior PCs because it... <laughs> It, it runs. Uh, Overwatch 2 is something that we've been waiting for as well, and I can't wait for that also. Um, I mean, these are games that will draw me away from whatever it is I'm playing right now, no matter how much fun I'm having. It doesn't matter. Whatever that game is that I'm enjoying now, the minute these either one of these games come out, I will jump on them. I'm pretty sure everyone else uh, out there that appreciates Blizzard games would, would do the same or feel the same. Your, I don't know what your take is on that, but... Well, look, let's see what they say. So they're not saying it's not going to hit the holiday this year. Uh, That's but fine. They, conf- they, they confirm Call of Duty, though. <laughs> 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 Call of Duty. Different crowd, different crowd. Yeah. So it won't reach, it won't come out this year. And what what DSO Gaming is saying is that the uh, what they heard is, yeah, before it'll always be online. There'll be no offline mode. Cosmetic mm-hmm. mic- microtransactions, which is normal for an Activision mm-hmm. slash Blizzard game. And uh, no worth to support mods. Uh, Crossplay between all platforms, which would be a, which would be good. Uh, better animations, new graphics, and so on. Mm-hmm. Overwatch Two will have a single player campaign, from what we've been told. Okay. Right. What's what the rumors that are going on out there? So that's going to be a good add-on because there was there's a lot of lore in Overwatch. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If exactly. you remember, there's a lot of lore, but it really didn't they didn't really touch upon it because it was always more about of a of a PvP right type mm-hmm. of game. But the, the Overwatch 2 will introduce a significant amount of PvE, co-op PvE. Yeah. So it, it, it had great lore. If they leverage it, it'll be good. Yeah. I look forward to both of those games, like, uh, big time. And I prefer that they not rush them um, so that we don't have, like, a cyberpunk-type issue with uh, with these games. Blizzard talk- hasn't been the same for a while now. So I, I don't know what they're capable of. I don't know if they've lost their touch. So I really, really uh, hope that they don't rush either one of these games. Well, our friend plays... Is, isn't our friend playing the latest... Uh... World of Warcraft? Yeah. Uh, yes, he is playing uh, World of Warcraft uh, without What's ray called? tracing. Shadowlands? Shadowlands? Yeah. That's he's it. playing Shadowlands. Um, he is a, he is a avid PvP player. So they're doing arena gameplay most of the time. Um, there's a big rush in the storyline to get to the end game. Um, World of Warcraft has always been about the end game as well. I mean, some people enjoy. Um, that's why they have PvP servers, they have PvE servers, and they have RP servers for the role playing. Uh, but him being a PvP player, it's the rush to get to end game. Um, Diablo 4. I would say is also a rush to get to end game if there is any end game, but it's a fun grind all the way up there. Overwatch is a completely different game. I, I don't know. I, I, I love both games, so uh, I can't wait. I just don't want them to rush. Um, I love World of Warcraft too, but uh, I, I'm done with that. That's <laughs> how many years has it been? For God's sake, like how much? Look, you just have to admit you were addicted to that game. Yes, you spent a, a large amount of money into it. We yes. have other friends who are addicted to World of Warships and World of Tanks, and they've dumped so much money into they these games. Boats. They have bought they boats. They have bought boats. Yeah. I mean, some people get addicted. $100 boats. Let's hope they're significant I, others and find out. And then there's people like me who buy hundreds of games and never play them. 
<laughs> you're another kind of sickness. You know that. That's another one. <laughs> no, it's, oh it's not hardware acquisition, not software acquisition too. I don't. But games don't sell out, so I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh my right. god, we're a dying breed. But anyway. <laughs> All right, let's get to a topic that's uh, very interesting. Uh, very interesting, interesting to us and a lot of other people. Thirty eighty. Thirty eighty ti. So the leaks have changed again, and I, in my opinion, I think this is going to be what the card will be. It's going to have the same memory uh, bus of the 3090. It'll have almost the same CUDA cores of the 3090, mm -hmm. but 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Okay. I believe this is what the card's going to be. Yeah. The reason why? Gives the 3090 some breathing room. Yes. Else, yeah, a 20 gigabyte 3090, a 3080 Ti would just kill the 3090. It would Absolutely. be dead in the water. Absolutely. Even if they released the the uh, professional drivers, it would still been dead in the water. Yeah. So, uh, Copic Kemi, uh, Copic Kemi 7 Kemi, basically uh, one of the biggest leakers for GPUs on there on the, on on Twitter. A lot of people follow him, and he's usually 99% accurate. Is basically saying the latest uh, update he's got that the specs have changed. Mm -hmm. So 10,240 CUDA cores and 12 gigabytes of GDR6X. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit less than a 3090, and the it's half the frame uh, buffer as a 3090. Yeah. But it will use the same memory uh, controller. Mm -hmm. So 384-bit bus with a slower RAM. But this is simple. GDR6 overclocks like no tomorrow. Yeah. So you could easily get the clock and the bandwidth up. Like with my 3070, uh, 30, sorry, with my 3080, it's uh, it's it's over 21.5 gigabytes per second. Right. So. Hey, you very... clo you close the gap between a 3090 with your card. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, these numbers are, these are uh, Founders Editions numbers, so you can only yep. imagine uh, what happens when AIB versions come out. So uh, I I'm guessing this card is going to be 10% faster. Mm-hmm. The 3080 and 5 percent slower than a 3090. Uh, best case scenario, best case scenario. Uh, worst case scenario, the 3080 Ti, 390 are exactly the same, yeah. and it's only going to be five to seven percent faster than the 3080. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know what? I'll be honest. I think 3080 Ti, 390 are going to be neck and neck until most of the games. Yeah, it's not enough. Depending on the on the core and the frequency, mm -hmm. this core count deficit is not enough to make up anything. Right. If the clock, if it's clocked as fast as a thirty eighty, they're basically going to be the same performance. Yeah. So three ninety and thirty eighty Ti will probably be the same performance in games. Hmm. And if it's five hundred dollars cheaper, which one do you buy? Of course, you buy the thirty eighty Ti. Yeah, of course. So at this point, Nvidia needs to. Uh, what, what a lot of people are hearing is that the thirty ninety will get rebranded. That's the rumor going around. Okay. It, the gaming. Branding again, it's selling. It's selling out. You can't. You can find it, but it'll be sold out. Yeah. The gaming branding at 3090 may change a bit to more of a quasi game slash professional. Right. So, and they may release the uh, professional drivers. That's what people are hearing. So. What about pricing? We'll see. Pricing uh, the pricing. 3090. It'll be the same or more. Okay. It's not going to drop. No, it can't drop. It might. Never. Never in its life will it drop. <laughs> Until the 4000 series. And then you'll lose 90%. Not even. Not even. Not <laughs> even. You don't think so? <laughs> okay, so going to buy a 3090 uh, second market with a 4000 so, series. So tell our listeners then, would you then make the jump from a 3080 to a 3080 Ti? Knowing so, now. Now knowing this, will I make the jump? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. April 2021. That's the rumor. I don't know, to be honest. I still think the difference is not going to be... At best case, 10% greater than a 3080 from 3080 Ti. I don't know. And worst case, 5%. So, uh, I don't know. I have to see the reviews. But what, I, what I'm definitely not doing is selling my 3080. <laughs> Before. <laughs> uh, uh, so, that's not happening. I will, if, if, I end, if I decide buying it... Maybe I wanted two extra gigabytes of RAM. I don't know if it's needed, to be honest, but mm -hmm. I don't think it will be. But um, 
if I do decide to get it, I'm definitely buying it first before I get rid of the 3080. Right. 100%. All right. You? What about you? I, I think I'm riding the 3080 out until... Yep. Uh... Uh, it's it's not it's not a wrong decision. It's, no. it's a it's a fast card. It's and it's it will be a fast card. Served me very well. My thirty seventy is serving me well. Um, I wish the the thirty seventy had a little bit more memory, but I am using it for what uh, I'm using it in a way it shouldn't be used. I'm playing at four K, um, where on certain games the 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 memory does get a little bit. I I do have to dial down some of the settings because I do get a memory warning in the game saying that. That potentially could run out of VRAM. Oh, I don't, don't know. That um, doesn't mean anything. It, it does. It, uh, I, I, I've I, seen the effect. I've seen the effect. I, I get it on the uh, in Call of Duty. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, Cold War. I get it on my 39, uh, 3080. Mm -hmm. It says, ooh, VRAM warning. Ooh, 9000. Ooh, nothing. <laughs> it's really nothing. It's, mm -hmm. Okay, maybe 8 gigabytes you're yes. tapping. Yes. No, no, no. It, it'll it's go rate, over. It'll shoot over. Yeah. But you, you shut the ray tracing down. Yeah. You're you're good to go 4K. Yeah. Like you put it to low, with, and you put the DLSS to performance. You're good to go. Yeah. So right. again, I don't know if you're gonna write it out, which is not a bad idea to be honest. I would write it out. Is fast. I what? would write it out. I, I would write it out. And also, we we paid less for our cards. We paid the MSRP. We didn't buy from a scalper. We didn't get the yeah. cards after the price increased. Uh, I th I think it's a bad financial decision to do that because you'd be selling. I don't know what kind of offers you'd get if the 3080 comes out. People might think that all of a sudden the 3080 Ti will be available and start offering us $450 no. for the used cards again. They I don't want, want to go they, through that again. I'm not going through it either. So again, if I decided to get it, I would go and buy it first. Mm -hmm. And then I would sell my 3080 at the price I bought it for. Right. And, <laughs> <laughs> and if you walked into a store and they told you the waiting list on a 3080 is about a month and a half shorter than a 3080 Ti, you need to make a wise decision there, uh, knowing that a 4000 series or a refresh might be just a little bit down the road, not to waste your money buying something more expensive for only 5% uh, better performance and also waiting longer. Because the release date says April, but in reality, you're looking more towards summertime by the time you get your hands on that card maybe right maybe you'll be waiting two and a half months on a waiting list yeah, correct maybe. me if i'm wrong but is well, anyone going to get that card on april well maybe i would get it cause I'm <laughs> luck. But, like, like, but maybe average person i don't know but you're right i mean i, I look i be honest i'll be honest with you i think the 38 ti may be more available than 3080 you think yeah i believe because this, the the to get the die mm -hmm. down to uh, the actual cores that are available, mm -hmm. and then the memory bus and GDR6. Look, you can't find 3080s. Why can't you find them today? There's got to be a reason. Why is the 3080 the hardest GPU to get? Because uh, they're higher binned 3090 chips. No, you mean lower binned 3090 lower bin. chips. Sorry, yes, lower binned. There's two things about it. I think the 3080 is so expensive to make. Mm -hmm. The margins aren't there. That's one thing. And yeah. two, a lot of these, a lot of these uh, dies aren't are coming in at a um, not defective. So they're coming with a lot of proper dies. Okay. So they have to disable cores manually. Okay. And the card is not. They cannot reach the 699 MSRP to sell it. Yeah, that's the problem I think with the 3080. They don't want to make them. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, the card is overpowered. They made it too. <laughs> it I, again, they made it on the that's same sad. 102 die as the 3090. Yeah, it's completely overpowered. It to me, uh, um, a TI or a Titan versus the X80 model, it's a 20, at least 20 percent in performance yeah at least here it's barely 10 percent yeah it makes no sense it's overpowered and i believe they can't reach that number mm -hmm. yeah okay there is manufacturing shortages and all that stuff yeah that's all true but i believe in my opinion they can make them because the margins are more on the 3090 mm. that's why you see more of them right you actually see them on the shelf yeah absolutely yeah. 
so we'll sense. see. We'll, we'll see what happens with the 3080 Ti. I'll wait for the reviews. If I want to get it, I'm going to walk into Canon computers and then just pay for it. <laughs> I let them. I let them call me when it's there. In two weeks. <laughs> yes. And when they call me when it's there, I'll go pick it up and then I'll go list my 3080 at the same price I purchased it mm-hmm. and see somebody buying it. <laughs> I, That's I, it. I tell you. That's it. Yeah. Because the 3080 is still going to sell for a high value. Of course. Of course. And you, you don't want to scalp. I don't want to scalp. I just want my money back. If I can get my money back, I will get my money back for mm-hmm. a 3080. Yeah. As there's no depreciating value. There's no, no. there's no shame in asking for your money back. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If you put it for $1,000 more, then I guess I'd say you're a shithead. But yep. um, yeah, but I, I think maybe you could just write out this one generation and just I not can't. go through that stress and put yourself 100%. in that position. 100% I could write it out because it's 3080 is powerful enough to write mm-hmm. out the generation. Yeah. So we'll see. Okay, so this is the greatest. I think this is the funniest thing I've ever seen and uh, for the next article, which mm-hmm. I knew this would happen. All oh, right. God. <laughs> Chinese miners using RTX 30 series laptops for mining <gasps> power. Oh, my God. This comes from Tom's Hardware. I can't... I, I can't believe it, but I can. Wow. Okay, Ethereum Ethereum is skyrocketing. It is. Okay. But due to shortage to GPUs everywhere, some Chinese miners are turning 30 series laptops as a new way to mine the cryptocurrency. Oh, God. Look at this. That is insane. Look at all these. Look at this. What, yeah. what brand is this? I don't, know what brand. I, I don't know what that is. It's, it's maybe a Chinese brand, but I can't get over this. And I mean, Look at this. compared to their, de- their their desktop partners, they're not putting out the same performance. They don't have the same. Um, no, they overclocked the memory by a thousand. Huh? I'm reading that now. Look at this. And <laughs> oh my I god! Never, I, didn't, I didn't even read this. Look at this here. A vlogger named Billy Bees stated that she went to a Starbucks in China with an RTX 3060 laptop and paid for. <laughs> <laughs> in two hours. <laughs> in two hours. Pay, uh, show the payout. Where, what is it? Two hours you claim she made almost a dollar US. Oh my God. Like, Jesus. Average hash rate of 46 mega hash. Now, yeah. now she I'm just going to... She, she was enough to buy her coffee, almost. Yeah. Now, now, just to be on the... Just to give everyone a little uh, point of view on that. 46 mega hash. Uh, uh, RX 580s at a good day would do around, what, 29? One card, 29? 29 mega hash? Yeah, around that. 29, 30, I think. So, yeah. yeah um, that's crazy. That's just that's a laptop version of an RTX 3060. Wow. I can't believe We this. live in I great this, times. I knew, this, I knew this would happen. I knew this would happen. Either scalpers would get to sell these laptops mm. or, or the miners would figure out, I guess. Yeah. Get them together. I, I, wonder, I wonder if that's a Max P or a Max Q laptop. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my I don't God. know what brand this is. Probably a Chinese brand, but yeah. yeah. Wow. That is, that's comical, but not un, it's not unexpected. <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> I can't. I can't get over this. Oh man. All right. That brings us to the end of the topics. That brings us to the end of our topics. Um, that was, I mean, we we covered the uh, basic food groups there, GPU. Um, we've covered the laptops. They've been topics in every one of our chat chats for the last few uh, last few episodes. Yeah. Talked about I some think, games. I think that's it for the laptop discussion, I'll be honest with you. I think so, too. Um, I, I think that was the cream of the crop right there with the mining. So um, I know we always like to close our segments off with some uh, ranting or or share an experience that we've had in our our PC gaming. Uh, um, I think maybe one rant would be good to talk about here. We talked about it in one of the last episodes. Why I wouldn't go to AMD or why you might not go to AMD. Um, a particular CPU that you had experience with once um, when you were an AMD fanboy, right? You had the uh, top of the line AMD CPU. Can you tell us a bit about? your experience with the 9550 90 well yeah whatever it was like the 5 gigahertz bulldozer <laughs> yes bulldozer so i i was upgrading my pc it was that or haswell um so i went amd I mean, even though the haswell was faster 
uh, Newegg had a good package for like the mobile power supply and the CPU. Mm-hmm. So I got it from Newegg, came in. I believe it came with the water cooler as well, right? Yeah, it did come with the it water cooler. It needed water cooling, yeah. Yeah, it came with the water cooler. Installed it, put it together, it didn't work. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so I called Newegg. Newegg has great RMA, so mm-hmm. uh, Newegg Canada. So uh, I called them up, they said, yeah, no problem, ship the CPU back. Uh, with everything, basically. So I put package RT up, sent it back. A couple, uh, I think it was five, six days later, a new package came. I'm like, great, let's build my PC. I put it together, and it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, it didn't work. I don't know what was wrong with it. It just wouldn't boot. Uh, I tried everything. I gave up. I called the, I called Newegg. I'm like, listen, it's the second time. I don't know what's wrong with this. Like, no problem. We could refund you. I'm like, no, no, no. Just, I'm gonna send this back, credit me, and uh, what I did, I bought a Haswell 4770K. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember that you were angry. Oh, you, I was you pissed. You were texting. Yeah. You were angry, and you were you were an AMD fanboy. You even had the uh, you were uh, running Crossfire. What, what cars were those? The 5800. Before no, that, that was older. That was before that. That was before that. But uh, I had two 5870s in Crossfire. Mm-hmm. Uh, before that, I had I had a bunch of AMD cards. I really uh, so my my besides the 3D FX GPUs I had yeah uh, I had a GeForce 256 a GeForce 2 GTS and then it was AMD mm-hmm. AMD all the way to uh, what did I what was my AMD to an RX 290 I think mm-hmm. I believe that was it my RX 290 290X and then I sold it because that's when the mining craze started yeah. Uh, I sold my 290X, and uh, what did I get after that? I got a 780 Ti. That was it, and then that was it after yes. that. I have ever since then I've been Nvidia again for GPUs. Nvidia and Intel. Yeah, for, for processors. So I, I went from 780 Ti, 980 Ti, 1080 Ti, 2080 Ti, and the 3080. Yeah. So my last five cards. I was I was also AMD for CPUs as well. I had the Athlon XP. Um, the 80, 8350, 8250, and my first Intel CPU that I bought, and you guys laughed at me for going into the Extreme series because um, you guys were still on DDR3. I went to DDR4, and I got the 5820K. Um, it was it was needed. The 4770 was much faster. It, it was it was games. faster. I had more cores. I had more threads. Uh, DDR4, but, but it was, it was when, slower in games. When we were playing games. We were playing Daisy. We were playing non-optimized games. Yep. You guys were running the games faster than I was. Yeah. And that pissed me off. I think one of our friends had the forty i five. Yeah, the i five, and I think he was. He still has the i five. Still has it, and he was getting better FPS on certain games. Remember, because yep. optimization was better on uh, four cores. Yeah. Four core, four thread. So. Uh, uh, I can't believe he still has that CPU. He still has it. And he still has the same 40 RX 480, and he's paired it up with a 4K monitor. <laughs> yeah, that's another story. That is another story. That is another yeah. story. So, but that's it. So I, I switched from AMD since then to mm-hmm. uh, NVIDIA. And uh, I've always had... Uh, so my GPUs, like I had 3 dfx I, Like I said, I had the two G-forces mm-hmm. at the beginning, and I went to AMD after that, and then back to NVIDIA. Uh, my CPUs have been mixed. I had Pentiums, I had uh, Athlons, uh, basically, but I've been riding Intel for, what, the last three CPUs? Yeah. 4770K, 7820X, mm-hmm. and now 9900K. So, really, 9900K at 5.1, there's no reason to upgrade for yeah. games, especially the resolution I play, there's no difference. Yeah. So. Your 7820X, uh, 8 uh, core, 16 threads, right? You're still running 8 core, 16 threads to this day with your 9900. Yeah, so the 7820X had the issue with the mesh. Yeah. Where yeah. The, the interconnectivity between the, the cores was uh, not as quick as the ring technology. That's out right. Of the, That's right. Yeah. Out of the uh, non X series. So the X series is dead in the water now from Intel. Yeah. Threadripper has completely destroyed <laughs> <laughs> any of the uh, HEDT from Intel. Yeah. So I don't know if it's ever going to come back. Uh, AMD right now owns HEDT. Their CP, their, yeah. but the Threadrippers are extremely expensive. Yeah. And not the best for gaming. So. Yeah, they're pretty decent. 
but They're price decent. price per game price, price, uh, price per value games, it's it's yeah. not worth it but, but uh, i think this is the point where we might see a switch to amd this is why we're, we're we're talking about it more we're talking about our memories with amd i think maybe it's a gateway into our us changing over at least well, on the cpu side to amd well you said you want to do more videos and editing you amd has i do their, i want more cores absolutely so their, their mainstream platform gives you their 16 core yeah but i don't want heat i don't want heat they're zone. not heat they're, but they're not the, the zen 3 is more efficient than anything intel has so you have zero problems <laughs> then when ddr5 is available i might make a switch over to amd yeah so that'll be well, the day but here's the thing zen 4 will have ddr5 Mm -hmm. So that's next year. Yeah. Zen 3 Plus, I'm putting in plus and quotes because I think that's what it's going to be this year, mm -hmm. is still DDR4. Right. So Intel may have DDR5 first. So. Uh, then I don't know if I can wait that long. <laughs> but again, if Alder Lake is a complete fail because it's a completely new architecture for x86, right. what would you do? I guess I'd have to wait for the reviews or I'd have to get my hands on one and test it out and and see what it is for for not just the gaming aspect but the content creation video editing what's the speed um i i don't just use adobe photoshop i also use um, a program called uh it's a sony specific program that stabilizes video image uh, from the sony cameras and a lot of people complain about how long it takes to stabilize the image because it's software and hardware um, sort of being combined together to soften out an image. People complain about that, but I seem to be doing a lot better than them because of the hardware, the 9900K, the 3080. And uh, so for me, I think I'm doing more content creation than I am gaming now. That's what I that's what I see right now. So AMD is starting to look much more and more uh, interesting. And the only thing is the DDR5. I wouldn't want to upgrade to something and then get stuck on the DDR4 platform for a long time. That would suck. Because then you would have better hardware acquisition than me, and then that would suck too. <laughs> I can't have you have better shit than me. If you bought a 3090 tomorrow, I would have to buy a 3090. So don't buy a 3090, all right? You would not buy a 3090. It's I might. Stupid. I might do something no, stupid. Even, so if don't I do went, if, even if I went to buy one, you would not. It just doesn't make any sense. So it doesn't we, make any sense. We've done stupider what, things before in the past. For so what anyway. for what you use it for, you would not even have to buy a 3090. Even if I bought a 3080 Ti, I don't think you would have bought a 3080. <laughs> you even said you won't. I so. said I won't, but don't put me Jeez. in that position. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, look, we're out of topics. We've ranted enough. Uh, we want to leave some more content for episode four coming up next week. Um, I want to appreciate... Uh, you guys for uh, taking the time to watch these videos. We are getting views. I am putting in the chapters and timestamps down below, so that doesn't make it easy for you. If there's a topic that's more interesting to you versus something else, um, you can skip ahead and listen to that portion. It it does help the channel out a lot, so I just want to say thank you. Um, Roberto and I are having fun doing this, and we are sharing good information. Um, our sources are good. You guys can check out the sources individually as well because the, uh, the links will be uh, below in the description. And uh, we are enjoying this and hopefully one day we'll be able to get our hands on some software or some more information so we can give you guys more exclusive information rather than um, what we're providing right now. So the, the further we go, the more we'll be able to do. Um, do you have anything else you want to add before we uh, end this one off? No, I think uh, you have, we have two videos coming this week. We're going to do Rust for our discount review, and you have something else, right? Rust is coming up uh, Friday um, okay. for discount reviews. It's my turn to like, and it's your turn to bash. Yep. Um, I also have a how can you make your Meshify C better. Um, I've just obtained a new um, Demsa filter for the Meshify C, which is going to totally change the entire engineering of the case. Um, I need to do some benchmarking with that before I can get that out. So uh, stay tuned. That video is coming up this week one way or another. Um, so with that being said, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll catch you next week on uh, Chat Chat episode four. four. Next week. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you later. Take care.